Electrochemistry is really fascinating, and there really are two different fields within electrochemistry. There are certain examples where chemical reactions drive an electric current. That's what goes on with a battery, with a galvanic cell. But there are other examples where an electric current drives a chemical reaction. We call those electrolysis, and that's what I'm going to show you here, an example of electrolysis of tin-2 chloride solution, okay? Tin-2 chloride, it's funny, I've got here about five grams of tin-2 chloride dissolved in the 100 milliliters of deionized water, and it doesn't look like it dissolves all that well, but this is just how I found to do it. You can add HCl, but you don't get the full effect. I like doing it like this and then just filtering it right into the Petri dish that I'm about to use. And it's going to take place right here. Um, I've got the electrolysis as a simple setup. It's a 9-volt battery with battery clips on the leads there. And from my electrodes, I'm simply using little paper clips that I'm going to affix right now to the uh, Petri dish. And when you do that, by the way, you want to put the long end of the paper clip on the inside so that it can go down to the touch the solution, okay? So, um, we'll go ahead and filter into this here, and this will take a little while. If it comes through, if the filtrate comes through um, cloudy, literally just run it through again. <laughs> um, what happens is the little tiny uh, precipitate particles block some of the pores in the paper, and um, then you filter a second time and it comes through much clearer. So that's what's happening right here. Um, so we've got a solution of tin-2 chloride coming through there, and you're thinking, what's going to happen if we pass electric current through it? Pour a little bit more in there, get a little bit more pressure. But uh, you want a clear solution for this to be, to get the full effect. Okay? You don't need a very thick layer of it, as long as it covers the, the bottom. Um, tin, by the way, keep in mind, has two common, well, three common oxidation states. There's tin neutral, tin 2 positive, and tin 4 positive, and that does have a consequence in this demonstration. So here we go. We're going to move this aside. And the way I can do that, by the way, is simply by taking this and just setting it back into the flask. Isn't that handy? Okay. I think I don't have enough, but I do. I'm just going to tip it like that. And now I'm going to connect these two electrodes, okay, to the two sides there. And right away, the camera can focus on this electrode over here. Um, we've got nice little crystals of tin forming. And you might want to bring the camera in close and see them. They're gorgeous. You look at this straight down. I put a camera straight on top of it like this. They're already about a quarter of the way across the Petri dish. On the other side, we have an interesting thing going on. You might be thinking tin tube forming tin on one and chloride forming chlorine on the other, but the other does not have chlorine bubbles there. I, if those crystals are showing up, then you're in for a treat because, I mean, I can see them from here. Let me show you this, too. I'm going to drop a metal wire, just a piece of paperclip wire, in the middle here, too. Whoop. little surface tension there. Let me put that back right there. Watch what happens now with it. If the camera can focus in on that, you see a nice little thing because as soon as I put that in there, it's actually conducting electricity through it and we're getting tin crystals on one side. Is that showing up pretty well? And on the other side, there's a little bit of the white precipitate there. The same white precipitate we've got on this side is now showing up right at this end there. You can see that maybe. Okay. You look at this under, not a high-powered microscope, but let's say a stereo microscope, like a dissecting scope, you can see these beautiful tin crystals, and they literally kind of fall down like this as they form, and they form at right angles. Very beautiful dendritic crystals. Oh, that's gorgeous. They're completely to the wire now, and if you look straight down on it, if you can zoom in on it, it almost looks like you're looking at an view of a streets, because there's a lot of right angles in these crystals. I don't know, maybe tin has a cubic pattern to it. That shows up especially over in this region, over here. You swear you're looking at some kind of city development over time. Okay? And look at this, this flood of white. And now you can definitely see the white precipitate forming on this side. Okay? So, beautiful demonstration. I want to go to the board now and talk about it. I might as well disconnect this um, because that's the effect of it. I hope that showed up well. Oop. Let me 
fish that out of there. Um, what exactly is happening? Why the, the tin crystals on one side? What's going on at the other? Well, at the one electrode, we have the tin 2 positive ion. That's what we've got. We've got chloride, too, with the, going on at the other electrode, but it turns out that's not the dominant reaction. Let's go to this one. The tin 2 ions are obviously gaining two electrons and turning into tin metal. What kind of a reaction is that? Well, if electrons are being gained, we call that reduction. And if we want to have a name for that specific electrode, we call it the cathode. Cathode is where reduction takes place. And the reduction is gain of electrons. And those are the beautiful crystals of tin you, you saw forming. Why tin is especially good at forming quickly like that, I'm not sure. Other things form as well. Silver forms, but not nearly that quickly. Tin, very fast crystal formation. But what's happening at the other side where we got this white precipitate? Because, you know, if it were on some test and you were said, what would happen if you were to run electric current through tin chloride? You would think tin at one side, and you would predict the other one would be the oxidation reaction where chloride ions turn to chlorine atoms by giving up an electron. I know, chlorine's diatomic. We need to have it like that. And you'd expect to see either bubbles of chlorine or at least a chlorine odor in that vicinity. None of that's happening. So this is not the oxidation reaction going on, at least not at any great extent. What is happening? The tin 2 positive, I believe, Recall I told you that there was a higher oxidation state. It's going to tin 4 positive. This is the easier pathway for it to go. So that's the oxidation reaction happening at the, what, oxidation anode. Isn't that convenient that the reduction happens at the cathode and oxidation happens at the anode? So why the precipitate? Tin 4 chloride, the ion being so much higher charge, is not nearly as soluble. So you are then forming a tin 4 chloride precipitate. And that's that white you're seeing there. So lot, lots of chemistry going on. It's a beautiful uh, illustration of not only uh, electrochemistry, electrolysis, solubility, but also something a little bit discrepant. I would have predicted chlorine. I think most people would have, would be forming with one. Instead, we get a white precipitate, and to try to account for that, I believe, as I said, it's tin-4 chloride precipitating out. Thank you.